Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Today, I am going to take a step back and at the same time, take a step forward. What do I mean by that? Well, if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know that the way that I started this channel was to review, let's just call them alternative methods of swinging the golf club, alternate golf swing methods, the outliers, some things that were not necessarily mainstream. I've reviewed the Jim Venettos golf swing. I've gone through right-sided swing, single plane, Zen golf, Marcus Edblad, flow motion. Since the beginning of this year, 2023, I have spent the last four to five months in trying to find my own golf swing. I feel like I've done that to a certain extent. It was what I would call my foray into finding my own conventional golf swing. I've gone through different tips and drills from various instructors that dealt with conventional golf. And now I think it's time that maybe I take a step forward by taking a step back. I'm starting a new review today. What is that review? You might ask, what am I going to review? Well, if you couldn't tell from the opening swing I made, let me give you one more look at it and you tell me what you think it is. Another concussive baby draw down the middle. The review is going to be on stack and tilt. Real quick, before we get into today's video, I have two things that I'd like to say. Number one, my amazing wife came out here and decided that my space, my, my turf, my mat, everything out here was just a little bit too shabby and she took it upon herself to come out here and vacuum this very area for me. So thank you very much to the greatest wife any guy could ever have. And number two, if you haven't checked some of my links down below to save yourself some money, go do so. I've got codes for Big Macs golf bags. This is the best golf bag I've ever owned. Please go check out Big Macs. Find yourself a golf bag. They also have push carts and things like that, accessories, and you can save yourself money using my code down below. Also, there's my Amazon link. You just go to your Amazon page through my link. You spend no extra money, and it helps to support the channel. There are tons of other great people that I deal with down there from 24-7 golf to buying at gloves. Save yourself some money. Take advantage. Let's get into this video. I'm going to start back at the beginning with a pitching wedge, and with anything that I start, I always try to start slow and small. At this point, when you're watching this video, I have experimented very, very little with stack and tilt, but I've watched a ton of stack and tilt videos. Tom Segudo, Nick Taylor, the golf tech videos that are out there. Those guys are pretty heavy into stack and tilt. I know a little bit about the history of it. We'll probably get into that in some other videos, but for now, just with my layman's knowledge and what I've learned on YouTube, I'd like to share some of the things that I know about stack and tilt. Number one, you want to keep more of your weight on your lead foot at the beginning when you address the golf ball, and you also want to keep it there throughout the swing. There's no need to shift your weight back and forth. That is one of the core fundamentals as I understand it. Again, I'm not working with anybody's direction here. I'm just going off of my own research and what I know. Number two, one thing they like to do for mobility is to flare both feet out a little bit. Instead of squaring up or just flaring the front foot out, they like your hips and your shoulders to be able to move freely without restriction. They encourage more turn and more flexibility, so flare the feet out. That works on your base, all right? Now, when you get over the golf ball, it's going to be mostly turning your shoulders and trying to leave the club pretty much in front of you the whole time. You don't want this excess movement with it. You don't want a lot of hand and arm manipulation and flip going through the ball. You don't want any of that. They want the shoulders to turn back and then the hips to turn, get to a slightly open position at impact, and then the hips tuck under and the spine tilts back away just a little bit. I saw a video recently where Golf Tech was talking a little bit about what the pros, the best pros do, and they had these three 36 degree measurements. I like to think of it as the rule of 36. I don't know if anybody's used that. Feel free to use it if you want to, but you want 36 degrees of shoulder tilt when you go back 
to the top of your top of your backswing. Okay, so about 36 degrees. There is some play in that, but we're just going to try and stick to 36 because it's right there in the middle. So your shoulders get to this 36 degree angle when you're at the top of your backswing. The second 36 is your hips. As they open up, you come into impact. The hips need to be opening to the target. It has a lot of variation in that, and they do say that there's a sweet spot that you can open your hips way too much and make it extremely difficult for most golfers. So they think that a good average is about 36 degrees open with your hips. And then for the last 36 is when you get to your your photo finish and you're holding it for the camera, you want your hips under you and your spine to actually be going a little bit backwards in a nice balanced finish. And guess what that angle that they say is optimal? You guessed it, about 36 degrees. So armed with some of that information and from a lot of what I've seen on Tom Segudo's videos, I feel like I at least have a good basis for how to build a stack and tilt swing at least in the beginning <laughs> to get myself started, okay? So I'm gonna set up with most of my weight on my front leg. I wanna try and keep my left arm straight, a fixed radius. I don't wanna do a lot of hand movement. I wanna keep my hands in front of my chest. I'm gonna turn back just like this, stay on that left foot, try to get that 36 degrees, and then turn and tuck my hips under to a finish. Gonna start really small here with a pitching wedge and make some small swings to try and get my contact to be correct. Just like that. Down the middle, just little swings. Just starting out small, starting out slow, not trying to apply any real power at this point. I just want that consistent low point. That is one of the hallmarks that Stack and Tilt promises is to have a very consistent low point and a very consistent strike. So normally I would stay here all day and I would continue to do the same thing over and over and over until I felt like I could pretty much do that 99 times out of 100 without fail. And only then would I move to either A, a longer club or B, a longer swing. In this case, I want to try and work my way up to a longer swing with the pitching wedge. So. Set up again, left arm straight, most of my weight on my left foot, my lead foot, for you guys that are lefties, it'll be the lead foot. Get the shoulders to tilt. Back and through, just down the middle. Crispy, in the middle of the face, no effort, no effort. Consistent low point, that's the key. Consistent low point and optimal strike conditions with the club. Shallow angle of attack, very crisp contact, shaft lean at impact, club face squaring up, very few moving parts, back and through. Touch a draw, even with these short little pitching wedges. I'm barely breathing on this pitching wedge and I'm getting it out to a total distance of about 100 yards with almost no roll. 96 carry, 101 yards total. So. As I build my way up, I just keep focusing on the same fundamentals. And there, the contact was just a little off. So if I get some shots where they're not optimal, maybe I back it down a little bit and I go back to a shorter, smaller swing and I check those core fundamentals as I understand them to make sure that they stay in place and I'm not sacrificing my position over the golf ball in search of more power until I'm ready. Now I'm gonna fast track it in this video a little bit just for the sake of the video. Remember, this is only video number one. I'm gonna make a series of these. I'm gonna show you my improvement and what I'm working on each week. I'll take this out on course and show you a few tests along the way. Who knows what I might get into in this review. I may actually end up going for a lesson. Who knows? Who knows? Might try and go see somebody who really understands this swing. All right, but I'm gonna set up now with the seven iron and I'm gonna start with a small swing. Just staying in it. Just staying in it, small little partial swings, not trying to put too much into it, really focusing on maintaining this, this tilt, this angle here with my spine, 
trying to turn back on that same angle, right? Hands here in front of me. And then from here, I'm trying to turn and get the hips open at impact, tuck the hips up under, and finish nice and tall with my back slightly arched going toward the target. So with a small swing, it's going to be almost a, I guess you'd call it a punch swing. Just punching, just punching through it, staying in that position. The weight doesn't shift. That's basically a, I don't know, it's like a half or even a, a three quarter swing with the seven iron carrying out to almost 150 yards. Really, you just stay in it, keep your weight there on the front and maintain it throughout the swing. No weight shift, no weight shift. You don't need it, you don't need it. There's a lot of people that have compared stack and tilt to Jim Venetos. There are quite a few differences, quite a few differences. So I'm not going to make that comparison, but you can see that just with small swings, you're producing power. That's what's attractive. The other thing that's really attractive to me about this swing model is the consistency of the low point, which is honestly, that is one thing it does share in common with what Jim Venetos teaches. Consistent low point, consistent angle of attack, consistent sweet spot strikes. Just stay where you are, turn back. So much power that ball's going back in my golf bag. Again, these aren't full shots. It's not full shots getting out around 150 yards with the seven iron. That is a very positive start. I'll be continuing on. Check me out. This is going to be a series. Be sure to subscribe and like and comment down below all that stupid stuff that you need for YouTube. But stick with me and I'll try to carry you along on this journey as I go down the road of stack and tilt. See you next time.